days like today, we have a lot of questions. And so we are bringing in News 3's exclusive law enforcement analyst, former Norfolk Police Chief Larry Boone. So we want to thank you for joining us. We do. And, you know, the, one of the first things that we reviewed today was the timeline offered by Chesapeake Police when they got on scene, when they were able to clear. What is the process? You know, we all think about Uvalde when people didn't go in when shots were fired. They were able to get in and in a matter of minutes they seemingly were able to control that. How does that happen? So, you know, shortly after Columbaum, you know, the incident out there, the SWAT team responded and it took hours before they went in. And we all know the unfortunate aftermath um, regarding that. So police departments throughout the nation started training. How do you rapidly go in? Mm -hmm. What appeared that Chesapeake did last night. So now we train patrol officers that are on patrol to uh, assist on these messages. So uh, it appears that they got there relatively quickly. I think it was like three minutes before the uh, first officer got in there. And if you hear gunshots, you got to go. Okay, this is a dangerous job. You can't sit out there and think about it. You got to go. Um, and as they're going through uh, the premises, uh, they're strategically um, addressing individuals that are injured. We're taking care of those that are injured as we look for this suspect and um, are those that may be hiding. So. Earlier in our newscast, we heard from an employee who was in the break room when the shooting unfolded. And she said at first, because it happened so suddenly, she thought it was an active shooter training drill. And then it took, she started seeing bodies fall and it took right. her a while to take off. You know, it's sad that we have to ask this, but how, how, are, how do you respond? with an active shooter situation? Well, you know, the FBI came out with the process years ago, a run, hide, fight, right? It appears that's what she did um, to some degree. Uh, I heard earlier that uh, there was a patron in the store, heard the shots, took off her shoes and left the uh, premises. Very smart, you know? So those are your options, you know? Um, and, 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 and in many cases, uh, folks are starting to fight, mm -hmm. okay, as we saw in Colorado. Yeah, and when do you make that choice? Because the thing is, is that we've learned since 9-11 that people are in no mood to be attacked these days and they will try to, you know, uh, handle that situation. But how do you know the right choice at that? Kind? Barbara, you, you know, OK, you know, if you have an avenue of escape, you're going to take that. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that avenue of escape, you're going to hide. Mm -hmm. And if you hide, be prepared to barricade that room and be prepared to fight. And you've got to have a plan, particularly if it's more than one person inside that room. The last time we heard from you, mm -hmm. you kind of teed it up about there's legislation. You know, we, we, we've got to do something. But 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 here's the thing. Because you hear some lawmakers talking about an assault weapons ban. In this case, the indication is that it was a, a, a handgun. We, we don't know yet whether it was purchased legally or not. But, but, but if it was, how do you stop something like this? Well, Kurt, let me, I'm not ignoring that question. What happened last night was so unfortunate. But it happens every day. Okay, mass shootings happen every day in some of our communities, not just here in Norfolk, throughout Hampton Roads and throughout the nation. And those shootings are just important as well. So what we do, there's very little we can do until we take a real look at addressing um, how the folks get in their hands on these weapons. And, and to that end? Well, are you talking about like straw purchases that uh, some I, people I, or I, what? I am talking about straw purchasing, uh, the ability to buy maximum amount of uh, guns uh, per week. I think they've changed that here recently though, but you know, we, we talk about these incidents, seems weekly. Uh, as I said previously, we've gotten so good at responding to them, it's unfortunate, but that's where we are. I mean, when you think about there's a hundred plus guns for every hundred individual in this country, that's, that's alarming. You know, there were, I guess, some people saying that they were told to watch out for this particular Walmart associate, this team leader. And it makes us think about the mass shooting in Virginia Beach, that there were some employees that were yeah. afraid of that particular individual, the shooter. What are the red flags that you should be looking out for? And if I can piggyback on your question, sometimes police respond and there's not enough to make an arrest just by acting strangely. What do you do? Well, you know, in those cases, we, we're going to interface with mm -hmm. that individual. We're going to capture as much data mm -hmm. as we possibly can, just kind of start a profile. Mm -hmm. Over time, if you get enough of those calls, uh, having done this long enough, we kind of know 
those individuals. So uh, perhaps the average layman doesn't understand that, but the more these things happen, more folks are going to start reporting our, you know, behavior. Chief Boone, thank you so much for your analysis. It's good to have an understanding from the law enforcement end. Thank, thank you for you. that.